Hi guys, my name is Michelle Johnson. Welcome to our Capybara Enrichment uh, for our virtual enrichment day. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little information about our Capybara. We do have 16 total, uh, which is a, a normal range for a group of Capybara. Uh, capybara are the largest rodents in South America, uh, in the world, but they are found in South America. And they are a semi-aquatic rodent, which means that they are very good swimmers. Um, they're found in the savanna areas and in dense forests in South America, but they're always found around a body of water, because like I said, they are very good swimmers and they spend a lot of time in that water. It's actually um, a place that they will go if they are uh, feeling threatened. They use that as a safety mechanism and they'll dive into that water. Uh, to avoid predators and they can actually hold their breath for five minutes um, to stay away from those predators um, and they can actually sleep in the water so they'll stick their nose out and they will uh, sleep in the water to stay safe. These guys are herbivores um, so they eat uh, lots of grass, they eat produce uh, such as uh, fruits and veggies and they also eat a lot of uh, foliage um, so tree branches, bark, uh, leaves off of trees. Um, and because they are rodents, uh, their teeth are constantly growing. Um, so they have to file those teeth down on that tree bark and uh, wood objects, um, just like any other rodent would. Um, and they use those teeth to break into the uh, tree bark and ma it makes it a lot easier for them to eat that. So these guys, uh, like I said, uh, in the wild, uh, would be found in 10 to 20 uh, individuals in a group, typically, but they can get up and have been seen in groups of 100. Um, so that's a really big number. Uh, thankfully, we don't have that many. Uh, we're, we're kind of happy with our uh, somewhat larger group of 16. Um, so we do have a range of ages. We have anywhere from a few months old all the way up to almost four. Um, and we have a mix of males and females. Uh, both males and females have what are called marilla glands on their forehead. This is a scent gland that they use to mark in their territories. Um, you can actually tell the difference between a male and a female because the males are gonna have a larger marilla gland uh, than the females. Um, so these guys, um, like I said, are herbivores, so they're not going to be eating meat. Um, so our enrichment item that we gave them is actually browsed with some produce uh, mixed in and kind of skewered like a shish kebab on there. Um, so they are foraging through that browse, uh, which is actually bamboo this time.
Um, so our enrichment item that we gave them is actually browsed with some produce uh, mixed in and kind of skewered like a shish kebab on there. Um, so they are foraging through that browse, uh, which is actually bamboo this time. Um, but we give them a variety of different browses throughout the day um, to help with those teeth and help them file down those teeth. Um, these guys are very docile, um, especially in captivity. Um, they do very well in zoos um, and with other species and mixed species exhibits. Um, so these guys um, can actually get up to 140 pounds. Typical range would be 70 to 145. Um, so we have a mix. Uh, we have a few uh, smaller ones because they're still juveniles. And then our adult male is actually on the higher end, closer to that 145. He's a pretty stout boy. Um, in the wilds, though, these guys are pretty uh, pretty good standing. Um, they're of least concern. Um, thankfully, they're doing pretty good. But they are hunted for their meat and their skin. Um, so their numbers have decreased a little bit. Um, but, but thankfully, um, because of their being so docile and um, not being too much of a pest, um, they've been doing pretty good. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy uh, our enrichment day item that we have given them. And uh, stick around. Look forward to um, watching the other enrichment items. Y'all have a good day.